Hello everyone. In today's lecture, we are going to learn about object oriented programming concepts for Python. These are some of the major principles of object oriented programming for Python which are given below. We have classes, we have object, method, inheritance, polymorphism, data abstraction and encapsulation. These are the major principles for object oriented programming. Any language that has these features we say that that particular language is an object oriented language and Python has all these features that is why we say that Python is an object oriented programming language. We will be discussing these uh, principles one by one in detail. <coughs> we will start with the class. A class is a collection of objects. A class contains the blueprint or the prototype from which the objects are being created. It is a logical entity that contains some attributes and some methods. We can create class by using the class keyword. We have attributes, we have set of methods within the class. You can see this is the this is the definition of a class. This is the general syntax how we can create class in Python. We have class we are using class class keyword. This is class name and under this identification we have set of statements under the class. You can create set of methods set of attributes under a class. We will see with one example how we can create a class in Python along with the attributes and methods. Now object. Object is an entity that has state and behavior. It may represent the real world entity like a mouse, chair or any physical entity you can represent with the help of an object. Everything in Python is an object and almost everything has attributes and methods. An object consists of a state, behavior and identity. A state is nothing but a set of attributes. The values it has that represent the state of the <coughs> object. Behavior, behavior can be represented by the methods of a class and it also reflects the response of an object to other object. Third is identity. It gives unique name to an object and enables one object to interact with the other objects. So we can say object has these three things state, behavior and identity. Now. With the help of a simple example, we see how can we create classes in Python, how do we uh, mention attributes, how do we define the methods within the class, how are we creating objects and then with the help of objects we can call the attributes and the method of a specific class. So for creating a class we have a class keyword. This is the class name, car is the class name and colon. This is the syntax for creating a class. So whatever you mention under a class you need to put under a specific identification all the methods, all the attributes we can specify under the, this class. So see this in it is the method of a class. So this is how we declare the method def double underscore 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 in it and then set of parameters. So in it is like a constructor in Python. So it basically initializes the values of the attributes for the class. So almost every class you will be seeing this init method here and every method which is there in a class, the first parameter is always the self parameter and the rest of the parameter that depends upon the requirement of your class. So for example, in this particular example in class car, 
we have three parameters in init method. First is self, second is model name, model name for the car and year. So these three parameters we are specifying here and colon. Under this, we are initializing the values to the the to the attributes of the class self dot model name. This is the attribute of the class, and this model name is the value which you are passing from here from the init method. Self dot year again. This is the class attribute. This is the class attribute, and we are passing the value year from the init method. The second method which we have is the display method to display the information whatever you want to display. So we have self display or sorry def display and because we do not have any parameter to pass inside the display method so we are passing the self parameter. So self is the default parameter which we need to pass in every method, in every uh, function which we are creating under a class. So here what we are uh, doing, we are using the class attributes, we are accessing them and we are printing the values of those attributes. So how do we access the class attributes? Using self dot model name. So self dot model name will access the model name of the class and self dot year will have the year. <clears throat> so this way, this way we have defined the class successfully. Now how do we access the method of the class? How do we access the attributes for the class? So for that we need to create the object for the class. So this syntax is for creating the object. This is object creation for class. So this is object name is equal to class name and the parameter list which we want to have. So C1 is the object. This is a class name. This is the general syntax which we have to use every time while creating a class. So then I want to access the method of the class. So with the help of the object dot operator and the method name. So this is how we call the methods of a class. So init method, this init, init method, we don't have to call the init method. This is a constructor and it will be called automatically as soon as you will create object for the class. So as soon as you are creating object, the init corresponding to this, the init method will be called up automatically passing these parameters. This parameter will be going to the model name and year. And then we are using c1.display. The methods and the attributes will always be called using the dot operator. So we are using object name, dot operator and the method name like this. So every time you need to call the method, you have to use the same format. So this is a simple creation of a class accessing the methods of a class, accessing the attributes of the class, right? <clears throat> now, we will be looking into the Google Colab for running this class. So the same example here, we have a class, I have specified the init method, I have specified the display method and then we are calling. Okay, then now what we can say is uh, we can run this program and you will see as an output you will receive because in the display method we are printing the model name and the year. So we have displayed with the, the model name is Toyota and the year is 2016. So in the same way you can create as many methods as many attributes within the class. <clears throat> we'll go back to the PPT now. The next concept is inheritance. Inheritance is one of the most important concept of an object-oriented programming. 
inheritance is the capability of one class to derive or inherit the properties from the another class the class that derives property is called derived class and the child or the child class and the class from which the properties are being derived that is known as the base class or a parent class or a super class so we have a for example with the diagram i'm representing the inheritance for example this is class a this is class b so this is known as parent class or a base class or a super class you can give any name to it and this is the child class or a subclass or derived class so here the concept of inheritance tells that whatever the properties class a is having all those properties are being inherited by class b plus the class b will have its own specific set of properties also so the benefits of inheritance are it represent the real world relationship in a good way secondly it provides the reusability of code we don't have to write the same code again and again and it also allows to add more features to a class without modifying it for example you have created one project and at later stage you 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 get that that you have to extend the functionality of that project so instead of writing the entire code from scratch what you can do is you can use your existing code and that can behave as a as a parent and you can create another class your child class may inherit the properties of the base class and whatever the extended features you wanted to have in in your project you can add them in the child class so that is the basic concept of inheritance it supports reusability of code you don't have to write the same code again and again from the scratch it saves your time <coughs> it saves the memory space in python we have different types of inheritance we have single inheritance multi level inheritance hierarchical inheritance and multiple inheritance so with the help of the diagram you can understand better that the first image in single inheritance we have a single base class and a single child class in multiple inheritance we can have multiple base classes a and b are the base classes and c is the child class that means c class c that is the child class is inheriting the properties of both class a and b so a and b are the parent to class c in multi level inheritance we have multiple levels so you can see here a b b to c so we class b is inheriting the properties of class a and class c is inheriting the properties of class b ultimately class c will have the properties of both the classes a and b right <clears throat> then we have hierarchical inheritance in hierarchical inheritance it is opposite of multiple inheritance we have a single base class or parent class and we have multiple child classes class b c d all three classes are inheriting the properties of the base class a now we will see the examples of different types of inheritance here we have a example of single inheritance we will see how do we write the code for inheriting a base class into the child class so here we have a class parent this is a parent class we have defined a parent class in the parent class we have two methods one is init method and the another one is the view method which is displaying the information so 
I have already told you about the init met method, what is the role of init method. Here we are taking three parameters, self, self is the default parameter in every function. We have f name and f age. <coughs> so first name and age, these are the class attributes. In order to access the class attributes, we have to use self, self dot first name. So whatever parameter which init function is passing through will be going into the first name, f age will be going to the age. In the view method, in another method, we are displaying first name and the age. Now we have a child class. Now the child class is inheriting the parent class. So for that the syntax is this is the child class name and in the functional bracket we have to write the name of the base class and call it. Here you have to specify the init method again because this will be the constructor for the class. This is how you will be uh, constructing the values of the class attributes. Now we have init method with again the same parameters def, f name and f age. So f name and f age they are the attributes of the parent class. For calling the parent class constructor we have to use here parent dot init. Now here first we have to call the parent class constructor. So we are passing these parameter to the parent dot init method. Now the self dot last name, this is the attributes which belongs to the child class. So here we have this adurica in the last name. We are printing, <coughs> we are printing here the course name, the first name and the age. So here you can see that we have created an object and when we are using inheritance, the object of the child class will have to be created all the time, right? So we are creating the object of the child class OB child and we are passing two parameters which are first name and age and the child parameter, the last name, this here we have defined here already or otherwise you can pass the third parameter all way, uh, also and in that case this will be overwritten, right? And we are calling the view method. So we have the view method in the parent class also, in the child class also, but because we have created the object of the child class, always the method of the child will be called up. So here the child view will be called up and it will display the information, the first name, the age and the last name. <clears throat> we can see the output of the program in the Google Colab. So let us see, let us go to the program. This is our program <clears throat> for single level inheritance. It is the same program which we have seen just now. So we have a parent class, we have a child class, we have created object of the child class and we have, we are calling the view method. Now we are running this program. <coughs> you can see, first name is Alex, age is 28, last name is Joan. So this is how you can, you can display the output of the program. So here for example, if I am passing here one more parameter so that also we can do now let us see the output of this program so this is giving some error because because here what we are saying is we have taken up two parameters and we are trying to give three parameters so that will not be possible here so you need to specify the number of parameters should be same as you have defined in the code. Okay, so this is the output for the program. We have one more program for the multi-level inheritance. Let us see in the Google Collab itself. So here I have written one, one more program for multi-level inheritance. In multi-level inheritance, what we are doing is we have a student class, we have a test class 
and we have a result class. We have created three things. So the test is inheriting the student here. We are displaying the student information, student name and roll number. In the test, we are displaying the marks of two subjects and in the result, we are calculating the average and we are displaying the entire information. So for this, we have written a code. <coughs> Let us see the code directly. Here we have a student class. So this is name, branch and roll number. This underscore name, this represent the, the type of variable. So this is a protected variable and the protected variable always go into the child class. If it has been declared as private, then it, we would not be able to access the variable in the child classes. So that is why it has been declared as protected with a sim single underscore none so we have given the none values here to these name roll number and branch we have a init method where we are giving name roll number and branch whatever we are passing within the init method then in the display method we are calling the <coughs> we are displaying roll number and branch we have now test class this test is inheriting the student class here we have subject one and subject two we have declared and in the display we are displaying name self dot name because name is the protected variable you can directly access it within the child class if it would have been the private variable you will not be able to access this particular self dot name we are calling display roll number and branch which will display the roll number and branch of the student and then we are displaying the subject one and subject two marks which are there in the test class. Then we have result class which is ultimately inheriting the test class. Here <coughs> now in the test class we are calling, we are passing the parameters S1, S2, the marks which are going to the test, name, roll number, branch which are going to the, to the, uh, to the, the student class. Here we have to call, now we have called the test dot init method where we have passed all these things and within the test we are calling the student class init method. So ultimately all the parameters are going to the parent classes to the test and to the to the student class. Then we are creating a compute function which is which is tot, uh, doing the totaling of the subject one and the subject two marks and displaying the result. And here we have created the object of the result because result is the lowermost class we have to create object of the child class in, in, uh, while using inheritance. We are passing all the parameters here and we are calling display details method which is there <coughs> in the test class and we are also calling the compute method. So within the result you can access the functionality of both the test and of the student class. So this is how the inheritance works and you can see the output of this program name roll number branch and then we are displaying the subject one and subject two marks and then we are displaying the result. So this is the example of multi-level inheritance you can explore at your own for hierarchical and multiple inheritance as well. Thank you so much. That's it for the day.